Hello friends, I'm Patty Smith here at my journaling site on kind of a breezy October 20th. And what big changes have taken place since we were here last? All the leaves have fallen already. It's just amazing. And now behind me, the meadow sweet has indeed turned very golden. We're here again with my friend Persephone, Persephone the orphan baby possum. And your prompt for today is going to be to find signs of herbivores and think about how they're going to survive the winter. Right now, much of the herbaceous vegetation has died back, all the green things except the conifers are finished for the year. What are all of these herbivores going to eat or how have they prepared to survive the winter? We are gonna go on an herbivore safari. This alder has clearly seen some herbivory recently and I'm guessing a caterpillar has been gnawing on these still green leaves. Oh, this is a very exciting discovery. These little things are woolly alder aphids. Looks like a blob of mold or something, right? Each one of these individual aphids, and they're all living together in a little clump here, has exuded this waxy, furry, cottony coating to disguise the fact that they're just a bunch of helpless little soft-bodied insects. These guys are sap suckers. And to get enough of the nutrients they need, they suck a lot of sap and they exude a sugary waste material called honeydew. Lots and lots of other critters would love to take advantage of this honeydew. But as you can see right up here with this cluster of aphids, there are ants that often guard them. They farm these aphids. They protect them from other predators that might eat the aphids or just drink the honeydew. And in return, the aphids thrive. The ants can subsist on honeydew, which they carry back to their colonies. Each one of these little aphids is a clone. Each one is female and they all descended from a female aphid that was hatched from an egg on a silver maple somewhere this spring. She had wings and flew off to find this alder swamp. And now who knows, perhaps as many as a billion aphids are direct descendants and clones of that one female. Any day now, something very exciting is going to happen in the life of these aphids. They are going to give birth to a generation with wings. And in this generation will be both males and females. They will fly off in search of a silver maple and the females will mate and lay eggs. And then it will all begin again next spring. While you're at your journaling site, keep a close eye out for tiny bits of lint floating through the sky. These could very well be the winged version of these aphids on their way to find a silver maple. These are among my favorite little herbivores. We are seeing here signs of meadow voles. These tiny little short-tailed mice leave tunnels in the grass. They feed on vegetation all summer, and if you look closely, you might see places where they actually tunnel underground. And you might find stockpiles of clipped grass and seeds that they're stashing away for the winter. Here's a path made by a much larger herbivorous rodent leading from the pond up into this alder thicket. Let's see if we can find out what the beavers have been feeding on now that all the leaves have fallen. Look at this right here. Nice, neatly snipped off little alder twig. What sharp teeth they have. On this one, you can see the sap still oozing from the stump and get up close here. You can see the beaver tooth marks in there. Here's a much more ambitious project the beavers have taken on. Cut down this red maple, but they've encountered a little difficulty. 
the tree just fell right off its stump and is hung up in this fir tree. So they've started to cut the bottom again. And what do you think's gonna happen? I bet it will just fall straight down one more time. Ah, uh -huh. here is more evidence of herbivory. This is what the beavers do with those trees they were cutting down. They take the bark off the sticks, and that's what they're that's what they're eating now that the leaves have all fallen. Soon they will be iced into this pond, and so to feed for the winter, they've created this stockpile of branches right outside their lodge. They're going to be able to just swim outside, grab a twig from this big pile, take it back into their lodge and have a nice dry warm picnic. And that's what these herbivores do. Today we're going to head out in search of the largest herbivore in these woods. If I were a moose, I know just where I would head. There's a big meadow just upstream here where it a bull moose can really show off his stature. Let's see what we can find. While mushrooms aren't technically plants, there are a lot of herbivores that at least supplement their diets with mushrooms. And I always stop underneath these hemlock trees where I've seen digging, find these little pits where flying squirrels, porcupines, and white-tailed deer in particular excavate these little subterranean false truffles, also fancy name, hypogeus fungi. So look under hemlock trees for small excavations like this, and you'll know someone, some mostly herbivorous creature, has been here harvesting. Flying squirrels and red squirrels in particular have this very cute habit of stashing mushrooms up in the branches of trees where they dry in the sun and then they feed on them all winter. If you go out into a hemlock forest in the winter, you might, after a windstorm, see these little mushrooms scattered on the surface of the snow. So at this little hole, I have found a rejected truffle. And you can see that a porcupine has taken a bite out of it and said, oh, no, thank you, not this one. I think it's too old. And if you break these open, Inside are these spores, and if you rub them between your fingers, they're really dry and slippery. It's like some kind of dry lubricant material. And I, I um, have to tell you, they have a very wonderful aroma. Well, here we are. This is the place where I thought we might see a moose. Obviously, I was mistaken, but we're going to poke around and look for signs of herbivory. This is a place where I very often see signs of wildlife of all kinds. Otters, beavers, bears, moose, salamanders, frogs. Here's some sign of feeding by our largest herbivore. This little balsam fir tree is a favorite food of moose. And look what we have right at the base of this little fir tree. Yep, moose cat. Here's more sign of feeding by moose. In this case, it's a little red maple sapling. And you can see that the moose has nipped off the ends of all the small twigs up to the very tippy top, about seven feet up. And it must have just a heck of a digestive system to get any nutritional value out of such woody material. But this is what moose will eat all winter. Here we have an herbivore preparing for winter and doing what a lot of herbivores do. He has discovered a great source of calories packed in the shell of this acorn. And he's going to eat an awful lot of these and become as chubby a porcupine as he possibly can before winter really sets in and the snow buries all of the acorns. He's climbed the oak tree that's above us. He goes out to the ends of the branches 
and then he nips off twigs that have acorns on them, eats the acorns, drops the twigs to the forest floor. So that's a great sign that porcupines have been feeding in oak trees. Just look for these nip twigs on the ground underneath. See how this porcupine is using his long claws to hold and manipulate these acorns and those very sharp incisors to break through the acorn shell. In the winter, this porcupine will spend all winter very active, very active, feeding mostly at night and feeding in the tops of hemlock trees where he will be eating twigs and uh, the needles and that will provide all of his nourishment. So it'll help a lot to be nice and fat before that time comes. And that wraps up our herbivore safari. I hope you all have a great time out there looking for signs of herbivores and seeing how they're preparing for winter. Are you an herbivore? Are you an herbivore? <laughs>